Is there anything you want to say to anybody about yeah. this year? Yeah. This year. This year. No, next. Uh, next time, I'm going to be with Tito Derry the other weekend. On this weekend, she's going to visit a friend. I meant about this whole year we went through. Did you have a good year? Yes. You've grown a lot? Yep. And I'm all by full. Yeah. And, and I want to tell you something what I'm holding in my hand. It's an orange. Yes, it is. We're going to eat it. Okay? Okay. Um... So this has been a pretty crazy year. So I, I wanted to kind of go through and do a recap of the year, but we made so many videos <laughs> this year. So I decided that what I'd do is just kind of scroll through them a bit and just tell you about what's there. So that if there's anything that appeals to you or like you think you'd want to watch, uh, I'm like cataloging everything from last year. So you, you can watch anything if you've missed it or if like you're new to the channel. And I originally did this all with the camera so I could talk to you and everything, but my software I didn't set up properly so it was just the screen. And because of this, all the areas where nothing's happening, instead of uh, you seeing me talking, there's just the screen doing nothing. So I added footage from my drone channel and from my fitness channel, if you haven't uh, seen those. <laughs> The, the fitness channel is pretty terrible, I'm not going to lie. Kind of like the whole, it's so bad, it's good kind of thing. So if you check out the channels tab, you can check out the drone channel and the other channels I have and subscribe to those if you want to. Otherwise, uh, enjoy this and have, I hope that, yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> She's grown so much. You want to feed the snakes with these red tongs? Yes. But uh, the people on the internet said that these are not safe. Me? They say that if you feed the snakes with them, the snake's going to bite you. But, but they can't reach it because it's still little. That's right. <laughs> this was the year of uh, <laughs> singing <laughs> the snake on a chandelier song. Um, this was also the year that I got attacked by a veterinarian, so that was pretty fun. What did he say? Look at the size of that monitor. If that monitor turned around and bit his face, it would tear it apart. Okay, does that mean it's going to happen? No, but him holding it there puts himself in possible risk. I'm sorry, but you have no right to tell me that I can't play with a little toy drone that cannot cause any harm. Yeah, I wanted to feed a snake with drones from the moment that I kind of just got the idea in my head. And when I did do it, this veterinarian posted on his uh, animal homepage that I'm flying around a drone that weighs over 250 grams. Because I was flying a little like Chinese knockoff drone. And he thought like it was some professional drone, which I would never be flying in my house in the first place, and it wasn't dangerous at all. But now it's pretty interesting because that same veterinarian is now attacking uh, Kevin McCurley of Nerd for doing uh, for doing his own surgery or whatever on animals. And, yeah, that's pretty current and whatever, so we can talk about that a little bit. Like, when, when, you're, when you're taking care of reptiles as much as anyone that's, like, like, breeding, you're dealing with hundreds of animals, okay? So, if you have a pet snake and you want to take it for a yearly checkup at the vet, go for it. You should. <laughs> if, if that makes you happy, then, then you go and do that. And... Uh, if you have hundreds of snakes now and you're trying to run a business, do you think that it makes sense to take every single one of those to the vet? <laughs> By the time you're done doing that, you wouldn't have a business anymore. And it's not about like not wanting to give the animals what's best. It's the same thing with buying rats and mice. If we had to buy our rats and mice from the pet store, <laughs> we wouldn't have a business either because they charge more because you're buying one at a time and it's set up for people 
that go shop at the store. Consider this, though. Where's wholesale vets? When you're buying animals, you can buy them wholesale. You can buy them from wild caught. You can import them. You can do all sorts of things. Do we have wholesale vets? Do we have vets that we can go to and say, hey, I got a hundred animals. Can you come and check them all out? <laughs> Here in Canada, we have so little access to any decent vets. In the States, it might be better, but here, there are rarely any. The ones that, that are charge insane amounts, and the school that I used to go to to see vets is now shut down, so now we don't even have that anymore. So it's just a nightmare, and you, over the years, you learn to deal with different things, or problems arise, and you just kind of deal with them and for most people they should go to the vet for me I've always been the type of person that the vet is the last resource like if I, if I really had to and it was the last thing that like you know it, it'd have to be you know an animal I cared for oh okay <laughs> yeah if I didn't care for it enough I don't care not really but it's just like if I, if I had I think the other thing that's crazy about it is is this the the value of life we don't value mice okay we don't value rats we'll feed a rat or a mouse and a rat and mouse is much smarter than a snake but we'll just go and feed them to our snakes and no one will like say anything maybe some people that breed rats or have them as pets would be like oh that's a terrible thing but the moment that you don't take your animal to the vet or something people are being villainized and demonized and like all this stuff and it's like think about this you spend fifty dollars on a snake now you're gonna go take it to the vet for two hundred dollars first of all most people bought the fifty dollar snake because they were trying to save money now there's no way they're gonna take it to the vet and spend three hundred dollars on it and in my case even though I've, I've never had to do this actually but if I have snakes that are born dead I feed them to my cribo. If I had a $50 snake that wasn't going to make it, I would feed it to my cribo. Like, th that's just what I would do. I wouldn't take a snake that's not going to make it or isn't healthy and try to keep it alive. You have to think about nature, right? Like, in nature, all these animals are dying. In nature, there's 20, 30 babies, and then, bam, they all get eaten. So, in captivity, when we raise them and they all do well, some do well that shouldn't have done well, that in the wild would have died. So if you were to take one of those weak animals and feed it to another animal, to me, you're not doing anything worse than what you do every time you feed your snakes. Do you agree with that? <laughs> Let's continue. Humidity. Humidity is good. I talk to people all the time about how important a humidifier is, and it's so funny because... Every single time, they'll talk to me a bit, oh, are you sure? What about if I spray it? What about if I do this? No, get a humidifier. And like three people this year have gotten humidifiers and been like, yes, I'm so glad I got a humidifier. What else? Ooh, a random video about ADD. <laughs> Understanding ADD. About you? Yeah, we're going uh, to... Is that Monster Box? Yeah, in the mo <laughs> yeah. That looks oh it's just a thumbnail uh i'm cleaning up the channel still so this is going to be on my mental health channel called mental matthew <laughs> oh that'll come up later on this year uh simple isopods learning how to take care of uh insects and trying to be able to do bioactive setups has been something that i've really been enjoying kind of this year I haven't done the really bioactive setups for my animals, but I've been making like little mini bioactive setups for my insects and learning how to take care of them and have plants alive and do all that kind of stuff has been a journey and I think I'm finally starting to understand it. So I have a goal in the long run to set up a bioactive setup for my green tree pythons. So that's going to be really exciting. I'm hoping... Hopefully this year I can get on that. We had African snake, ha African house snake babies. Ariel attacking me as always. <laughs> so why, don't sit down, why don't you sit and tell the story? Yeah, yeah and I just sit. wanted to be like, oh, if you tell only, everybody. if you only. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That's not a good one to watch. Uh, I've started a little series 
talking about different morphs, so there's a boa constrictor morph guide, there's a playlist with a few genes. So if you don't understand how the genes work or what they are, you can check that out. I think that the one about recessive genes should help a lot of people, because not understanding how that gene works and with anery and albino and the common genes. So if you check out the morph guide, you'll be able to learn more about that. I did a little highlight reel of my old uh, Savannah monitor. Scarlet was one of my favorite pets. From the time that he was born, I took him to the park every single day. I think he finally figured it out. Well, like every day I bring him here to the park and uh, people watch. <laughs> And uh, when he's done doing his thing, like he goes to the bathroom and stuff, and then he crawls back into his bag. I miss no, no, Scarlet a lot. Snake though, over there, you can pet it. It's friendly. But when we had Avery, yeah. I decided to. They're playing with it over there. Um, they do their own thing. Yeah. yeah, but Scarlet was dangerous. Scarlet could have bit you. And yeah, he's my baby. Some are nice, I brought him but here Scarlet like was every not day as friendly. He's smaller than yeah. half the size of his tail. Then why do you this is his daily exercise. He was my pet. I feed him. He was, he was uh, dangerous for you. Cockroaches and uh, mice, and quail eggs. I don't eat tracks. Yep. Dun, 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 dun. He did it. <laughs> yeah, so basically, when when I had Avery, I decided that Scarlet wouldn't really be a good pet for us because he would wander all the time. I'd take him to the park every day and just... When you have certain animals and you have children, you have to be extra responsible because if, if anything goes wrong with an animal and your child... Uh, it just looks so bad. It's probably one of the worst things that could ever happen. So even though you see me being crazy and having fun and whatever, Avery's safety is very important to me. And if she was to get bit by a little baby snake or whatever, it's not a big deal. And in fact, that could help her learn to kind of be more gentle and everything. I at least believe that. And I think that having reptiles has been able to teach her responsibility and care and life. I've taught her everything. She knows about sex, she knows about life, she knows about death, and the animals have been able to help do that. And I'm really kind of, I think that you should teach your child before they go to school, because they're going to go to school and learn whatever crazy stuff they're teaching them these days. Uh, I used to hate myself. I made a video about that. Yeah, so... Many people, kind of the first time they've seen me or met me is online, and I guess the persona that they get, or how I behave, I like to be positive and happy, and, you know, I think we all like to seem like we're having the greatest life and everything, but I'm just a normal person with struggles just like everyone else, and growing up, I had a very hard childhood filled with visits to doctors, therapists, I had to be on medication at one point, like seven pills a day, and if I didn't take them, I wouldn't be allowed to be at school. System. I've never really liked the system and the way that it works, because I think that it's good for most, and it works for most people, but it, it's not for everyone. And understanding like when it's good and when it's not is important. I also have this theory, because my mother was a very good person, and my father was a very good person, and they had me, and I was like a nightmare. So they didn't really know how to deal with me, and they did some things wrong, as, as all parents do. But for me, I think that because I've gone through all those hardships, it makes me a better parent, and I'm able to deal with Avery quite well. Okay, the five reasons you shouldn't cohab reptiles. So just talking about why you shouldn't. I wanted to do that video first before showing people the secret I've never shared. So in this video, the secret I've never shared, we're talking about all the ways that you can cohab reptiles. Like I have a process, it's 30 minutes long, explaining that whole process of how you can cohabitate animals, but it's very specific and it has to be done kind of a certain way. 
It's, it's something that I've experimented and played with over the years. I think that's another fun thing about having reptiles. You can try different things. There's the way you're supposed to do things, and there's everything else. You know, the, We haven't kept reptiles in captivity that long, so we don't really know all the things that people say they know. And through keeping reptiles, I really do believe that they do benefit from interaction with each other. I don't believe that they're just solitary creatures that want to be left alone and don't want to be handled and all this stuff. I believe they're a lot smarter than people give them the credit for, but there's also risks involved with that. So understanding first all the things that you shouldn't do, and then if you are going to do it, and the way that it be done and everything requires actually a lot more work than just keeping them separately. And many times when people are keeping reptiles together, they're trying to cut corners, and then accidents will happen, and then it makes that whole thing a lot worse. So I actually think you'd enjoy that. It's called The Secret I've Never Shared, and you get to see my system for keeping reptiles together. Then we have a vet visit. So that was fun. We went to the vet because of one of my snakes that i pretty sure had... Um, inclusion body disease i'm not like i can't say a hundred percent but basically i reached out to the vet i said do you guys have a test for this they said yes i went to the vet and then when i went there they didn't have the test for it and it was frustrating because then I, j I still paid like a few hundred dollars to do some blood work like to do a test where they look in the blood for inclusions and they said they didn't find any but that doesn't mean it doesn't have it Anyways, I had to end up putting that snake down, and there was one other snake in contact with it, so I gave it away to someone to keep as a pet, and I told them it might have this problem, it might not. I didn't want to just put it down not knowing if it had an issue. It's with them, and hopefully everything goes well, and if it does start getting bad, it will have to be put down, because that's not something that you can fix. And I hope... Is it a him or a her? <laughs> Why? If it's a her, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if it's a him, it doesn't matter. Avery likes. I just want to know. Avery likes bo girl snakes, girl animals more. Know. It's a, it's a boy. I hope him's doing well, Dad. Yeah, me too. Where are you going? Right there. Here's a video talking about like, you can't go anywhere or get anywhere if if you don't know where you're gonna go. Lots of people try many different things and give up very quickly. For instance, being a YouTuber, it, it's hard, it's very difficult, and I decided I'm going to be a YouTuber, and I'm doing it. <laughs> Will I succeed? Yes, because I said I'm going to do it, so I'll just keep doing it until it works. So for you too, anything you want to do, the first thing is deciding where you're going to go. Yeah, small goals, big goals, but to me, I think you should you should aim high. Uh, <laughs> I'm always looking at the people that I want to perform as well as. At the same time, I like doing things my own way. If you take a look at Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, I think that's a perfect example of a guy that he's a friend of mine. He loves his cha he loves his channel. He loves what he's doing. YouTube has created huge opportunities for him. But it's also kind of put them in this box of the top five things, where everything's the five most exotic animals, the five most rare animals, these five, and all his videos are lists of five things. Then he went on this trip with a pile of old reptile YouTubers and made a, a Costa Rica video that he says is the best video ever made, but it's not doing well. But all his top five lists are doing well, and he's like, I'm not going to do as many of those top five lists, but if we look at his channel, the next, like, <laughs> out of the next videos, there's, like, five top five videos. So it's like he's been kind of put in that box. And for me, I'm not going to be put in no box. I'm going to give you educational stuff, and I'm going to give you crazy stuff. And if it doesn't do as well as other people, it doesn't matter. Eventually, I'm going to get there and do it my own way. How to tame a snake, more, more people like people like those videos, learning how to work with your animals, especially from the time they're born, because if you do that, it does, it does make a huge difference. What's wrong with the reptile community? They're poison. This community is the most, like some of the people I've met have been wonderful, 
But in our reptile community, it's just the most toxic environment I've been in. I've been in, like, card gaming communities, like, Pokemon-style kind of... <laughs> cooler than Pokemon, I promise. There's a game called Netrunner, and I used to play that competitively. And it was a whole pile of, like, nerdy dudes that were kind of suppressed and afraid of expressing their feelings. They were the type of people where, like, do you want a lunch break? Nobody wants a lunch break. One person says, yeah, let's have a lunch break. And everyone else just, like takes it i'd be the person that's like no we don't want a lunch break let's just play and get done and so i had a bit of a hard time in that community but it was okay now i'm a uh, in a drone community and with the drone people they're always bickering over each other like oh digital is so much better than analog and my drone's better than yours and oh when you were flying i saw prop wash and they they nitpick at each other like kids inside a sandbox and it's it's pathetic. It's actually pretty funny, and they get all bothered, and I don't get bothered by it at all, because I'm part of the reptile community, and you have to have thick skin to deal with the reptile community, because the group, of, there are some that are wonderful, but there are so many people in the reptile community that are just garbage. There are scammers, there's people treating their animals just so bad. At least for me, I have a window that puts light into the room and all the cages are facing that window. All my animals have a light, light cycle. I don't think it's right to take animals and put them in gray bins where they can't see anything. I really don't like that. Most of the breeders, lots of breeders are doing that and you, you'll see certain keepers and that's all they have. They have a facility with people working for them. Those people are cleaning all the animals. They're not really handling them, spending time with them. They're breeding their own rats and feeding their snakes live because that's easy. So there's no effort really made into spending time with the animals to make sure that they're really tame. There's no effort really made into holding the animals. No effort to get them on frozen thawed. And they really are breeding snakes and treating them like a puppy mill. <laughs> so I don't, I don't really like that. And then we have the same problem with pet stores, because in our community we should be able to have breeders and pet stores work together, where it's like, okay, I breed, I give it to you, and you sell it. Even if you gave me 50% of what the animal was worth, that would be fair, that would be kind of like nicer. But instead, the pet stores want to give you $30 for your animal, and then they'll go and sell it for $200, and that's like what they do or they'll import them from the wild and get them for dirt cheap not in the greatest conditions and then sell them for more these are all issues that we have and and the bickering between each other oh i'm better than you oh i do this you do that and it's just it's insane you know it's pretty crazy more talking about the spider ball python are they really terrible animals is it ethical to work with them and breed them. Do, 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 do. Snakes eating snakes. black tail Kribo is fun. Do snakes have bones? That's, that's a highlight. Building trust. That's another great video. So in the building trust video, I'm holding a green tree python that one of my buddies had for a long time and I wanted it. He wouldn't sell it to me. Eventually I got it and this snake he'd never handled. He was afraid of, and from the first time I took this snake in, I started handling him. We call him Alpha, and he's a wonderful snake now. He's still more high-strung, and he's the type of snake that I think if other people tried to handle, they would get nipped, but I've never been bit by him, and we've had a great time, so that's, that's a fun episode. More talking about humidity and how important it is, even for leopard geckos, even though they're dry creatures, they do benefit from humidity, and you'll see if you have a humid bin for them, uh, they like to go hang out in it and use it, and that's good too. Super dwarf reticulated pythons, from striking to stroking. Another fun one, where how you can get your animal when you first take it out is a little bit scared and get it to kind of calm down. Then, uh, yeah, that's the IMG boa constrictor litter. I'm still unsure with these. Some of them really do look <laughs> IMG, and some of them, most of them don't. So I'm, I'm going different ways with my IMG program. The easiest way to sex a snake. 
that's another interesting one. My opinion of the top reptile and pet YouTubers. That I a deep dive into like all the uh, reptile YouTubers I could really think of and share with you them and what I think of them. So you can go in there and maybe discover some keepers that you haven't discovered yet. Thank you to all you wonderful people. Yes, the best snake for beginners. So here you can kind of, uh, if you're considering a snake, everyone seems to lean towards ball python, corn snake, and like hog noses are very popular right now. But this video helps you kind of think about uh, more than that, more than just getting the snake right now. But what about later? Because a beginner snake you're going to still have for 30, 40 years. So if you have a snake for 30, 40 years, it's not really a beginner snake. And we go into that a little bit more. And my worst bite ever. So there you can see I was really swollen. It's the worst bite I've ever had. You want to see? It's not that bad. Welcome back. I just took a nice bite from Calypso again. I haven't been bit in a while, but check out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So see how swollen? You can see how nice and swollen it is. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the worst bite I've taken so far, so not that bad. That was worse than uh, this one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you want to see this one? This was, was fun. But uh, let's talk about it some more and uh, see if we can learn from my bad to? experience. Hi! <laughs> so that's that was when I got bit in the face. Uh, I, I had been hanging out with Calypso for a long time. I was holding her almost every day for like over a month. We were doing good and then I thought, you know, I can trust her, let her hang out. But the thing is that when you have snakes that are... There, there are snakes that are trustworthy and there are snakes that are not. And out of all my reptiles, I have maybe like two snakes that I can't trust that I shouldn't let near my face and just out of safety you shouldn't let any animal that could bite you near your face you know and we all do it you know you see people letting it, it would be like letting your dog lick your face for most people that'd be harmless but that would be funny. yeah but there is a chance that that dog could bite you in the face and with certain animals that's more prone to happen so you have to be careful about that uh, ooh, this was probably my most controversial video of the year, where we had a snake eat from my mouth. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Nice. That looks like a lady. No, that's, uh... It's her. <laughs> it's lady's friend. Right. No, that's... That's Steve. And who is that? That's Steve. So Steve, uh -huh. you can just, you can just watch it. Is that follow. Lady's friend? No, Avery. That's Steve. Okay. So now Steve, I've had. He's the second snake I ever got. I totally trust him. Uh, I put the rat in my mouth, like inside my lips, and it didn't actually go in my mouth. So I think a lot of people got bothered by that, which is whatever. I, don't, I came from a time where people used to feed dolphins fish from their mouth. And I thought, like, going to those sea shows, those sea shows, those sea shows as a child, that was always awesome. The dolphin would jump in the air and bite the fish, and that's dangerous. Imagine the dolphin jumped in the air, went too far, and bit the trainer's face off, then brings them down into the water. I'm sure it's happened at some point. But anyways... Uh, the drones feeding snakes and then mouth feeding I guess was more of like kind of taking it to the next level not in like a good way like in a this is dangerous or this is scary but I'm gonna do it like playing with fire or putting on a little performance that's that's how I viewed it <laughs> and some of the reptile community were unpleased you know oh we're gonna lose our privileges of being reptile keepers because of you feeding your snakes from your mouth oh that's how we get the coronavirus <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I fed I, I, I washed the thing with soap and all that stuff anyways that was that that was fun how to take eggs away from a snake how to identify head albinos that one's pretty interesting too 
Uh, we, we don't have the time. I'm just kind of... We're showing everyone what they can see on the channel from the last Please year. Please do What do you want to see? That. Which one? This one. Uh, then we have you. We have you feeding snakes. That's that's always fun. One time we did it sideways so people could see how she's feeding them. But Avery's been doing this since she was like two years old. She's been doing this forever. So it's just like it, it's nothing to her. Blind box out. Good job. Hey everyone, see? Can the snake reach your hand from here? No. Exactly. Last time I recorded from behind and people were saying you could get striked. And that was back when you were like two years old. How old are you now? Three. I'm not scared of snakes anymore because they don't bite me. You've never been scared of snakes. I think you were better at feeding them when you were two. <laughs> oh. You can do it. Step one. Grab up your tail. Good job. Very good. But there's somebody that wants this moon glow. <laughs> Dad, I want to see that Oh, well, we're, we're, we're going through everything, Avery. We have a whole year of videos that we have to uh, catch up with. Um, five things you should know before becoming a reptile breeder. Are you going to just make big money? <laughs> Is it going to be nice and easy? What are the things you're going to have to consider? So we talk about that a bit. Karaoke night in a reptile room. Me singing nonsense. I enjoy singing over COVID and stuff. I've just been singing and uh, I find I find it funny. I, I get a laugh out of it. Right now I'm trying to learn how to sing the Andrea Bucelli Time to Say Goodbye. Once I finally can do the whole thing in Italian, then then we'll, uh, we'll do another one of those. Baby crested gecko setup. How how I set up my baby crested geckos. Then uh, incubating crested gecko eggs. All that fun stuff. Target training. That's a very interesting one. I think. I think that taking care of your reptiles and trying to get to the next level and doing all this uh, new stuff is really exciting. Do you think you should target train your reptiles? I target trained my uh, lizard and that was great. But when it comes to target training and feeding snakes, it, to me it's a little bit different because. With lizards and stuff, you give them little pieces of meat, and and they're with snakes when they go into feeding mode, most of them lose their mind. They're they're not really paying attention as well. So, I don't think that we should combine feeding with certain and like if you did it with a tiny animal, sure. But I really don't think that you should be target training retics that are like big and stuff but that video goes through a pile of details you might find it interesting target training is becoming more popular and some people are pushing for it and my thoughts are there <laughs> we uh, had some abscesses to remove from some snakes so we had to do that and I did that myself and I look at it like popping a pimple and that kind of stuff too let's say there's a growth inside your snake there's another time where uh, Annie had a like a wart on the side of her skin and it kept getting worse and it eventually started bleeding and I guess people would say take it take it to the vet but if I had a growth on myself would I go to a dermatologist <laughs> so for th this is how I reason right so for me like you might go to a dermatologist and we know uh, pimple poppers is very popular but if I had a pimple on myself or a growth or something I would just cut it off and I'd be able to take it it's not that invasive it's not like deep surgery or anything so if a reptile of mine has some sort of growth or something I'll go and remove it myself and that's that's how I deal with it and I've never had a problem doing that. I did take Annie into the bathtub with a knife and I cut the growth off of her and she healed. If you want to see that video, let me know. I'll post it if, if you guys actually would be interested in seeing that. It's just the idea of someone taking their snake into the bathtub and cutting something off of them. 
I could see why some people would be really bothered by that, and that's that's why I haven't posted it. Uh, I don't. My aim isn't to bother you. Like it really isn't. I want to entertain you, make you laugh, and everything. But there are certain things like that that, like, I'll just do, and I just look at it like you just deal with it. Uh, whereas taking that snake on a, a few hour drive to some vet where they have to check what's inside it and then come back and do all these things. And once again, you know, take a snake that I rescued and I already basically sn saved that snake's life because the condition that Annie was in when I rescued her, like she would have died. I, I rescued three other snakes that day that I didn't even want just because the condition that they were in was so bad that they were they would have all been dead. So I took them, I saved their lives, and then when Annie had her issue, I fixed it. She's totally fine now. And yeah, something could have gone wrong. She could have got infected and died. But, you know, same thing. Every time you cut yourself, you could get infected and die also. So to me, if I'm good enough for me, then I'm good enough for my snakes. And that's how I view it. I'm not going to go and take a snake that I rescued and got for free and spend, you know, hundreds of dollars on something that I could do myself. Uh, on the other hand, like, like, it really is interesting with reptiles because if you do take care of them properly, they don't usually have any issues. And I've seen that. Like, I don't have issues with animals. They don't get sick. They don't have problems unless I kind of got them that way or... Um, rubbing their face, biting things, like, I really, my whole collection is very clean and I rarely have any issues, so if you take good care of your animals, you're not going to have these issues, and then many times the issues that you do have, like, there's not a lot of issues that reptiles will have that is, like, un- fixable like like it's usually fixable it's pretty like easy to fix or like not that hard to fix or it's not fixable and they're going to basically die anyways most of the time so if they get certain diseases they're they're not going to be you're not going to be able to fix them if they get ibd you're not going to be able to fix them you're going to be able to treat them or like medicate them and try and give them the best life you can and for me at that point I would give that animal to someone who would want to take care of it, or if an animal's going to be suffering that long, I wouldn't have a problem with putting it down. I think that keeping an animal alive that's going to be suffering, to me, is crueler than ending that suffering. But that's just how I feel. People get really attached, and you see it with dogs where... You, you have a dog, you have it for 10 years, it becomes part of your family, now it's starting to die. And people spending sometimes like $5,000 on surgeries to keep their animals alive, and then the animal might not make it anyways, or it doesn't work out, or the animal dies like a year later anyways, and now you've put yourself into debt. And it's like if you have an endless source of income, Go for it. Do that. But, like, for me, I'm struggling to get by. Like, that's the truth. Right now, through COVID and everything, my salon has not been that busy, and I'm barely getting by. Like, if I like th this December, I got by because I sold an expensive snake. Like, that's how I was able to pay rent. So, you know, it's not all rainbows and butterflies for everyone, especially not for me. Like... I don't know what I seem like online. I don't know if I seem like I'm like a like a bigger than I am or if I seem small or like what what is the outer view of me? I don't I don't really know. I don't know how people that have never been around me, I, I don't know how you guys see me. It would be interesting to know because I like uh, for the most part I just find in general lots of people just don't like me <laughs> cuz I'm I'm different or I'm I'm, I'm myself and lots of people have a hard time like just being with someone that just expresses how they feel because we're in this world where no one can express how they feel and I, I do I, I like to do that I, I, I tell you the truth I, I don't I don't need to hide anything and it's just I, that's how I've always liked to be that's that's my selling point you know 
You might not like me, but I'm just going to I'm just going to say it how it is. Uh, if you want to see how I edit my videos, there's my process. It's a long, boring video there. Then we have how to touch a super dwarf reticulated python. Just how to handle your animals. Because people, you know, lots of you are doing a great job and some of you aren't. So how to how to handle your animals. Then we I was doing, I've been experimenting with the live streaming and the streaming clean. I stopped doing it because I'm not getting that many viewers and it's difficult because I have to go wash bowls. Like the thing is I'm going to spend like, uh, let's say I spend an hour to two hours a day cleaning. So why not be streaming at the same time? The problem with that is every time I go to wash a bowl, I leave the camera empty and then I lose viewers and it's not that entertaining. I've been trying to find a way to have the camera set up in the bathroom and in the reptile room, like at two stations where I can go back and forth, but I haven't, I haven't really figured it out, and until I do that, I'm not going to be doing the streaming cleans anymore. I'm just sticking to the Sunday live streams. The Sunday live streams are where we, you can come hang out, talk to me, ask questions, and I'm happy to do that every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're here. I had a egg-bound snake, so that was the first time dealing with that. That was last year, first time. Then talking about reptile UV lights, you know, another thing. I think that, this, I, I do believe that the animals do benefit from UV lights. Uh, what I question is how long? Should they really be under that long? I look at it like, you know, leave them in a little bit less. Have it there, but just not as much, just to be safe. That's my reasoning. Uh, enrich your bored reptile's life. I love just checking the garbage. Like, I'm in a street that has a pile of apartment buildings, and they all have, like, big garbage things. Let me just make sure I'm... Yeah, I am. Okay, so they have all these big garbage areas, and I just look for stuff. There's always stuff that you can kind of, like, reuse, recycle, turn into something else. So I really like doing that. I'd encourage you to do it. Don't go buy like new bowls, like go to Value Village, buy a pile of uh, used ones, you know, and then not have as much garbage and help the world be a little bit of a better place. We do have one of these is super fun. Oh, this. Okay. So this, this is a hidden gem that I'm going to share with you because this was, this, this was pretty oh funny. Oh goodness. Look at that. Our light is now on the floor. Careful, don't step on it. The light's just... Yeah, clean up. Yeah. There's glass on the carpet, too. Well, take care of your snakes and clean. This was pretty epic. So we had an arm wrestle. Oh, my God. Go. Okay, the two for two. Yay. Yay. Yay! Oh, 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 David! What have you done? Oh, 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 my goodness! Yeah, so that that was probably the the funnest uh, stream that we ever had, and. Uh, Giant leopard geckos. My love project with leopard geckos. I've been focusing the past few years on trying to make the biggest ones that I can. So talking a bit about that. When I was first getting into leopard geckos, I thought that they they were known, the giants, as being a co-dominant. And now we know that they're recessive or, you know, not many people talking about all that stuff. And still, every time that I put a uh, pet supergiant gecko on two kijiji somebody bloody messages me and says oh you know they're not recessive they're co-dominant and it's like you know your information's old <laughs> okay then yeah the uv lights making stuff out of garbage um <laughs> instead of feeding them to my kribo i actually fed my tortoise the uh dead uh corn snakes that didn't make it then shorts, you know, you see me probably posting shorts all the time and I repost them. I post a short, if it gets less than 100 views, I delete it and I repost it because there's something about shorts, the way that they work, and you post them and over a 
period of two days, they, they take off or they don't. So if they don't take off, I just delete them and post them again. Just to uh, get another shot at it. Uh, if you're a creator, it's kind of stupid not to use shorts. I hate the way it makes my like feed get all jammed up, but it's just like you see this. I'm making videos every week that barely get 100 views sometimes. And all of these shorts, they just automatically get thousands of views. So to not use the would be a mistake. Handling baby corn snakes. Handling baby snakes is always a little bit challenging and you got to be gentle. Especially when it comes to stuff like, let's say, green tree pythons. I'm so excited to have a litter of green or a clutch of green tree pythons eventually. And I'll be able to raise those and document that well for you. Uh, when you're... Adding heat tape to reptile homes. Most people take the heat tape and they do like an S. And it's just like, for me, it's heating areas that don't need to be heated. And I wanted to kind of do it a different way or like how I think it should be done. So I show you how to wire up your own heat tape and do it so that you have heat for each home, but you don't have it like going through the whole thing. And I guess that way you're not using as much heat and you're not heating areas that don't need to be heated. Uh, goodbye, buddy. We said goodbye to Gaga this year, and uh, that was another, a snake I raised as a female that turned out to be a male, and he just wasn't nice, so I gave him to a buddy that had a female, so they might breed, and he'll give me a baby if that happens. Reptile shows. Should you hold the animals? Now we're not allowed to anymore. And so many people jumped on that bandwagon like, oh, I would never let anyone hold an animal, blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, what about like the love of the community and people and being able to give a kid their first experience holding an animal? I'd much rather let a kid hold one of my animals at a reptile show versus take an animal to a, a educational show and let 20 kids come and like attack it. Like, that, to me, it is a nightmare. But we talk about reptile shows a little bit there. I haven't been at any. I probably won't be for a while until all this craziness passes by because it's just, it's just nuts. I got Gastroprisianus, my dream lizard. They're amazing. <laughs> so cute, so smart. They are a little skittish, but I can hold them and feed them in my hands, so that's nice. Then we had... African house snakes, what do you do with the babies? Feeding them is a nightmare. The most difficult time I've had now has been feeding African house snake babies. I got monetized four months ago, and guess what? I still haven't got my first paycheck because I make about $20 a month on YouTube. There was this alligator attack where the uh, it happened inside a, a reptile place, and some dude like jumped in and got on top of the alligator and a girl had her arm stuck in the mouth of the alligator so that's an interesting one shenanigans back in the day i'd go walk around with my snakes and hang out at the fire station and all sorts of stuff or be doing shoots and stuff and then we have teach your snake how to how to like you know train your snake and i really do believe that you know, you can teach your snakes certain things. Can you teach them to play fetch or something? No. But you can teach them that you're okay and how to behave and everything. And it's just like that they they do more than tolerate you. I really believe that they do. And same thing with lizards over here. Here we have me uh, Frenching my boa by accident. Like it just happened and it was just perfect. I thought that was funny. Then Poa the Boa. Poa was my very first largest boa, my very first large boa, and I said goodbye to him last year also. So, like I said, I've been downsizing. I've been getting rid of a lot of animals that like have been my pets, and I haven't really posted them. I haven't been posting much for sale lately. But if you are in Canada or Toronto and you want to get a reptile, just contact me. I really like the more personal interaction. Like, I I really don't like how we just kind of have our animals and try and get rid of them. I, I like interacting with people, spending time with you, finding the animal that's right for you, and, and going through that process is something that I really enjoy. I enjoy that interaction. I like people. So if you want 
let's say one of my snakes that are my pets that I'm downsizing, you know, contact me, talk to me, and we can figure something out. I just want my snakes to go to good homes. And though I do sell to breeders sometimes, I don't try to sell to breeders. I don't, I, <clears throat> if I take my female snake and I breed her a few years and then retire her, she still could be bred like for at least five more times or something, but I don't want to sell her to someone that'll do that because that defeats the whole point of retiring her. I, I got what I wanted out of her. I got the babies. Now I want her to have a good life with someone as a pet. So if you ever like think that that's appealing and you want that, you want to take one of these to have her as a pet and not just breed her like, you know, merchandise, then like, and there is a place, you know what I mean? I, I am making a little bit of money doing this, but I really am not making much compared to the work put in. Uh, my YouTube channel makes me basically nothing, and my reptiles make me a little bit more than it costs to take care of them. Stuck eye cap on a uh, leopard gecko. So Charlie, my friend, went and he bought uh, leopard geckos, and one of them had an eye cap stuck in it. Even yesterday morning on Facebook, someone posted a picture with a stuck eye cap, and everyone's commenting, you know, like, don't... Uh, don't deal with it yourself. Take it to a vet. Sure, take it to a vet. For me, easy fix. Took that eye cap out, no problem. I've done this kind of stuff before. Am I a vet? No. But would I ever go to a vet for something as simple as that? No, I would not. And now that gecko is totally fine. It's doing great. Yes, you shouldn't do that. It's, it's kind of like, I don't know if you know crypto, where everyone says, look, this is not financial advice. But buy Bitcoin. I'm doing the same kind of thing with reptiles. I'm not a vet. I'm not telling you to do anything that I do. I'm just showing you and what you choose to do, that's up to you. But understanding that a animal like this, okay, let's say a $50 leopard gecko has an eye shed stuck. How much does it cost to fix at the vet? You know, I'm, I'm guessing at least 100 to $200. So 100 to $200 or a pair of tweezers. Like, to me, to some people it would seem stupid not to go to the vet. To me, I think it would be so ridiculously stupid to go to the vet to do something that I could do like that. And at the same time, yeah, you, you shouldn't do it yourself because you might poke its eye out. But, like, it's like, if you're going to do that, then you truly are an unintelligent person. Like, to take something and pick it up, you know, just pick it up, take it out, done. Okay, then some more, one of my friends. So I'm a hairdresser. I have access to lots of models. So I did a little fun little shoot with one of my friends and she's not, not even a model, she's just a friend of mine. But I, I was thinking I might start doing some stuff with actual like models because our community is all like mostly dudes and they probably like seeing models teaching them about snakes as opposed to me. But I haven't really pursued that that much and now we're going into more lockdowns and stuff talking about how to assist feed so we have videos in the past of force feeding and feeding tricks this is a way of assist feeding your reptiles some of the crested geckos that are available and how long does it take for a snake to eat some people wonder some people wonder these things black african house snake babies they're so cute we had another uh, clutch of them Getting a picky ball python to eat. Those ball pythons. <laughs> I have to do this for African house snakes because they're actually worse. Why snakes make great pets for children or anybody. This is just an adorable video of Avery and uh, Jasmine and me. I, I, I found like one of our old videos and posted it and made some nice writing with it. This is the video that you show to your friends to show them like, you know, how sweet snakes are and stuff. I think it's adorable. Then I probably shouldn't share this. Here I go deep into like the worst month of my life. Like it was just the worst other than, you know, back in the day when I was doing bad things. But like since I've been married, I haven't had a month as bad as November. I got hacked. Uh, people tried to like my building wanted to evict me. Uh, I had no money coming into the salon. And it's just it was just a nightmare month. 
if you have a reptile, you need this. We're talking about something that's important <laughs> that we have many times. Want to see some snakes? So in this video, I show you a whole pile of my boas, like just really nice for mobile viewing. If you have a cell phone, you can show some snakes, look at them. I basically took all these shorts and put them into one video so you could see them all together and then here are all the shorts separately like i said with the shorts people get to see them it's nice it gets out there but i made this video so that you don't have to go one by one and you can just watch them all by seeing that video want to see some snakes why is it up twice that is strange what is the best beginner snake? We discussed that some more. Then the truth about super dwarf reticulated pythons. Uh, one, there was a guy that, was it Ricky? Joel, Joel has been on my uh, live streams and he met, he's like, hey, I'm nearby. I got a super dwarf and it's just, it's too much for me. Like I, 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 I'm not able to deal with it or whatever. Uh, can I give it to you? So he, he came and he gave me uh, super dwarf and it was one of queen one of my ba one of my snakes babies so like grandchildren it was one of my snakes grandchildren so i took it because of that i knew where it was from i knew its bloodline i know it's going to stay small but it just wasn't the right snake for joel and super dwarf reticular pythons i'd say are becoming super popular they're amazing snakes but they do they do behave a little bit differently than the ones that I mostly deal with. And I have heard it from other keepers where their super dwarfs are as calm as my boas. So I, I haven't raised a litter yet. So when you raise a litter or a clutch of animals, you get to see how they really behave. It's totally different because you get to have it from the time it's born instead of, you know, you buy it and then you raise it. So. I'm going to have to go through that process myself if I don't end up selling my whole collection. I'm willing to let go of my whole collection even though I, I don't want to. But if somebody does end up buying it, then I will be able to upsize my boa homes and that will be good. And I'll be able to just have more space to have less reptiles and larger homes. Because that's basically the goal of this year. Downsizing, getting rid of animals, giving them to good homes selling them to good homes and like actually giving them away and then giving the animals that I have better care and uh, I want to do that since getting into reptiles about a decade ago the way that we keep them and the, the things that we know about them and even just personal experience you know you get something you don't realize so much about it and as years go by you learn more and I'm seeing more and more the intelligence inside snakes and it makes me feel more for them it makes me want to give them more it makes me feel a little bit guilty for having some of them in drawers even if they're big drawers and not to say it's hard because it's just like the, I didn't understand that heck? it's tricky because sometimes Sometimes a bigger environment isn't what's best for them, and sometimes they do better in smaller environments. But just once again, just playing with and experimenting. Like now I'm learning how to do bioactive. Later on, I'm going to learn how to do other things. And if, let's say, I put my snake into a bigger home and it starts becoming very cage aggressive, then I'll put it back into a smaller one. But I at least want to be able to test those different options and find out for myself. I, I want to. I want to go through that process and I'll end up sharing that with you. The best and worst aspects of boa breeding. So I talk a bit about that in there too. Then this video is pretty nuts. They're dead snakes, like an unborn snake was inside my snake for almost a year and then it came out and it was just nuts. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Then we have feeding snakes. Like, yeah, now we're up to date, right? And the funny thing is the last time that I fed a snake with my mouth, it got like over a thousand views. All sorts of people got angry. And this video, no one's got angry at. I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's because I, uh, it's higher quality. I made effort to do a really good job on this video. I did spend like, I spent like at least 15 hours editing this video. <laughs>
So that was the year. I could have showed you clips and stuff. I was going to show you more clips, but then I'm just like, it'll take forever. I posted a lot of content. Uh, if you find any of that stuff interesting, you can scroll through the homepage, or ho scroll, bleh, scroll through the videos, check out any of those that you found interesting. Thank you for your support. Thank you for hanging out, and thank you for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I love it when you interact in the comments, so... If you talk to me, you can always talk to me. You can always ask me anything. The other day, someone had an issue. They messaged me on Facebook. I called them on Facebook, and they're like, oh, I'm surprised you called me. And it's just like, I'd, I'd, rather, uh, I'd rather talk than text anyways. Like, I'm happy to help you with your problems. If you have problems and I can help you, I will. If there's a video that you want to see, if there's something you want to learn about, feel free to ask. I'm, uh, I'm always happy to do that. Uh, I have been struggling and going through a bit of a hard time lately, so some of the content that's probably going to be coming is going to be stuff I shot before that I didn't uh, ever get out, so you're going to probably be seeing some older videos. I'm going to try and clear those all out, and if anything new and exciting comes, I'll share that with you. And uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out, and uh, hopefully this year is better than last. Hopefully the corona stuff will be done this year. Anyways, see ya.